would open our eyes, that we would see Jesus trying to work in our lives. Open up our ears that we may hear a word from you. And then, Lord, open up our hearts that your word may be set the laws or the repository thereof. And no matter what we have to face in this life, we realize your word will rise up a standard and allow us to be able to face whatever it is. This, so oh God, is our humble prayer, and it is in Jesus' name we pray. And as God's children, we said, Amen. Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Isaiah, the 40th chapter. While you're turning there, we want to thank God for our deacons and deaconess. Come on and help me celebrate the greatest deacons and deaconess around. Amen. Thank you for each and every one of you. Isaiah, the 40th chapter, beginning at verse number 27. And it's on the screen for those that may not have their Bibles with them. Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verse 22, and it reads on this wise. Why seeth thou, O Jacob, and speaketh, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and faint not. Is that about how your Bible reads? Amen. Thus we read Isaiah the 40th chapter, verse 27 through verse 31. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearer, to the reader, but above all to the doers of his written word. I want to come primarily from that 31st verse with a sermon entitled, Those That Wait on the Lord. Amen. Those that wait on the Lord. You may be seated in this place. My brothers and sisters, we're living in such a time right now that we deal with from time to time those that have made up their mind either by words or by deeds that have decided that they're not going to wait on the Lord. You have those that will wait on anything but God. They will wait in line at the liquor store. But they won't wait in line to get inside the sanctuary. They will wait on hold on a 1-800 or 1-900 number. And they will wait to talk to some psychic that will try to tell them something. And right when they're about to tell them something that they think is going to be important, they will place them on hold. And if you pay just 10 more dollars, 
you can get some more information. Or if it's not a 1-800 or 1-900 number from some psyche, some phony person that will come along and call him or herself a prophet. We'll try to come and speak something prophetic into your life that is actually pathetic because they're charging you money for something that God freely gives. You've got to understand that there are folks that are searching for stuff. There are folks that are out there looking for stuff and they're looking for anything but God. Somebody out there feel like they won't be complete until they get a husband. I wish I had an amen. Somebody would not feel they're complete until they get a wife. Some would feel they're not going to be satisfied until they get a wife or a husband and some children. I wish I had help in there. But I want you to realize that if you get the husband too quick, I know I got a witness you can't say amen. I know you got a witness that if you get the wife too quick, amen, somebody, and you don't wait on the Lord, you will sit somewhere, and mama said you would wish in one hand. Hello, somebody. It's best just to wait on the Lord. Have I got a witness in this one? You see, because the Bible is telling to teach us, coming here in chapter 40 of Isaiah, that 27th verse, it shows the reason why the Lord has given me this to give to you at such a time. He gave it to Israel because Israel was sitting around. Well, let me read what it says. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speaketh, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? You see, when you make a statement like that, that your way is hid from the Lord, sometimes it seems like we can feel God has forgot our number. Sometimes we can feel like what we're going through, God can't see it. God doesn't know it. God does not understand it. And that's why the, the, the writer said, my way is hid from the Lord. And the Lord was the one raising the question. In other words, why do you want to sit around and act like I don't see what you're going through? Sometimes when we're going through a tough time in life, it seems like God is nowhere around. Sometimes when we're going through through some problems in life, it seems like God doesn't know anything about what's going on in my life. Can't you see the stack of bills, Lord? Can't you see that I'm about on E right here, and I done got so good with being on E, I know when it gets to the part of E at the beginning, I know when it's in the middle of E, and I know when it's really on E. I wish I had some help in there. And don't you see See this, Lord? Don't you understand what I'm going through? You can't see my struggles. You can't see how my children are acting. You can't see how my husband won't act right. You can't see how my wife won't act right. You can't see all these things going on in my life. Then I leave home, get to work, and Lord have mercy them folk at work. Don't you see it? We almost come to the conclusion and say, Lord, my stuff is hid from you. You can't see it. But you forget that God is omnipresent. That's the time you got to remind yourself that God is omnipresent. What does that mean? That means everywhere all at the same time. You can run and run for the rest of your life and you'll never get to the end of God. Nor if you turn around and come back, you won't get to the beginning. Can I get a witness in this place? God is everywhere all the time and he sees all and he knows all and nothing sneaks up on him. Even though sometimes they'll look at it like his judgments have passed. He'll look, sometimes we'll look at life like not only that he does not see us, but he doesn't understand how I feel. The one that knitted you in your mother's womb don't understand how you feel. The one who knows the hair, got the number of the hairs on your head don't understand how you feel. Come on and walk with me, somebody. You got to realize and remind yourself when it seems like you're out there all by yourself, God still got you. Have we got a witness in this place? 
At least I keep you too long. Let me just go ahead and cut to the chase. Because it's really what I want to get to is verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord. I want us to understand. You got those that I made mention of that don't wait on the Lord. But there is a group I know somebody understands what I'm saying that does wait on the Lord. And there's three things that you can uh, expect when you wait on the Lord. Y'all ready to go here with me? The first thing you can expect is spiritual power. But when you say spiritual power, you've got to understand that the Bible says they shall renew their strength. You see, when it comes to talk about renewing your strength, somebody in here needs to understand that one of the translations puts it like this. You can exchange your strength for his. You see, when you get down to your last, God is just ready to get started. When you get down to the point that you ain't got no more, you can go to God and he's inexhaustible. He never runs out. He never runs low. He got just as much as he started with and ain't lost nothing. I wish I had some help in here. You get some spiritual power. You can exchange what you got when you're down to nothing. When you ain't got nothing going on seeming like in your life, you can connect up with God and receive spiritual power. That spiritual power is so important because we've got to realize that God sees what you're going through. And that's why you didn't take the gun and end it all. That's why you didn't take the knife and turn your life over to nothingness. That's why you kept the car on the road because the Lord gave you some spiritual power to hold you and to keep you when you was all about to lose your mind. Have I got a witness in here? God gives you spiritual power, that Holy Ghost power. You see, it's not the blessing that I need, but it's the blesser. That's why the songwriter said, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. You see, too many people run up to God for a blessing and forget the blesser. How would you like if somebody just came over to your house just to get whatever it was they wanted to get and then leave every time? Didn't say bye, didn't say hi, just walked in, went to the refrigerator, got it, and left. Amen, somebody. Hello, somebody. You got to understand that God is the one that we need. We need his presence. We need to know that he's there. And that's what he gives you when he gives you spiritual power. Is anybody in the house with me? That's what you get when you wait on the Lord. Talk about those that wait on the Lord. Not only do you receive spiritual power, but secondly, you receive unusual peace. The Bible says they shall mount up with wings as legal. What you talking about, Reverend? Well, it simply wants us to understand when you study about birds, you discover that the eagle has learned something seemingly more than the other birds. He's learned how to depend upon the wind. You see, we need to remember that the Holy Spirit is the wind of God. You don't have to understand everything. You just need to know that, that, that God is able to lift you up. You see, when, when, when we be expecting God to show up in our situation, and just to come in like a hurricane and tear everything else up, leave us all right, and come in like a tornado and just tear stuff up, but leave us all right. But sometimes you got to look back to the way that the Lord did when his son came up out of the water after being baptized. The Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord descended upon him like a dove. You see, a dove represents peace, and God will give you some peace that passes all understanding. While you're going through a storm in life, you need some peace. And God, and those that wait upon the Lord, you 
wait long enough. Then he'll give you your power to be able to sustain you in there. And then he'll give you some peace that passes all understanding. What kind of peace is it? It's the peace that the Lord gives. It's not that the world can receive it. That's why you're not losing your mind when everybody else is getting a pink slip at work. You're able to still sit there and work and do what you got to do. That's why you're not losing your mind when they come to take the car because if they come and take that one, God can provide you with another one. I wish I had some witnesses in here. If you lose one job, you ought to know that sometimes when we pray and the Lord allow a job to leave, what he's doing is setting you up for another one that you were praying for while you were sitting there complaining about I wish I had some help. I walked out of one and walked right into another. I learned that from the Lord. They couldn't stand him at his home place. He was preaching and they couldn't stand him on his initial sermon and they tried to throw him off the cliff headlong. Yeah. They wanted to do that, but he didn't walk over them. He walked right through the midst of them. And the next thing they heard, he was over in Capri and preaching again. He kept his job. Somebody say amen. Yeah. See, you've got to understand, God is able to give you peace that passes all understanding. When the eagle just spreads his wings, the, the power of the air just lifts him up. That's why you got to quit running around and flapping your wings like you done lost your mind and just spread out. And let the Lord lift you up. If you didn't learn to spread out, the Lord can lift you out of some stuff that you're in. If you just learn to spread your wings and allow God to help you go through some stuff that would otherwise tear you down. Have I got a witness in this place? Talking about those that wait on the Lord. But not only that those that wait on the Lord will receive number one spiritual power. Not only will they receive unusual peace, but at least I keep you too long. Thirdly, verse 31 also says this, that they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So the third point is God will give you continued preservation. He will still preserve you. Those that wait on the Lord can keep on keeping on. When others seem like they're not going to be able to make it. God shows up in the child of God's life and gives them some keeping on, keeping on power. He will allow you to be able to do what other folks can't do because they're not dependent on the Lord. They're dependent on anything but God. That's why the Bible teaches us that we don't need to drop out, but we need to keep on keeping on. What you're talking about, Reverend, you see when Elijah had went and done what God told him to do, over in Kings 17, the next thing you know, it seemed like he was all in trouble. And I want somebody to know that when you do what the Lord wants you to do, it's going to seem like sometimes you're in trouble. But the Lord, we will see you through. How do you know, Reverend? Because Elijah was told to get out there to the brook. And when he got to the brook, the Lord provided water. And he had a raven to fly in bread and to bring him meat early in the morning and in the evening time. I don't know how he gonna make a bird go get some meat. I don't understand how a bird gonna come up with some bread. But I don't have to understand. I've learned that if I wait on somewhere that he will supply all of my needs. You don't have to worry 
when you wait on the Lord, when you don't made up your mind, he'll keep you from dropping out. Even when the brook dried up, the Lord still sent him on down the road to a widow woman's house. She had a plan to go ahead and get two sticks together and get the meal and the oil and to go ahead eat it for her and her son and then die. But the man of God said, take care of me first. And after you do that, the Lord will keep the oil and the Lord will keep the bread. He'll keep the meal. Am I right about it? And for the whole time, that little bit of meal and that little bit of oil did not run out. How long? It was three years that a little corner of oil and that a little bit of meal kept. Y'all don't hear me? Get me away. There was a burning bush, and I decided that I would go to the side to see why the bush was burning, but not consumed. Am I right about it? What am I talking about? The Lord can have you on fire. He can have you on fire, but he can keep you from burning out. He can keep you from burning
And if God has been leading you here, coming and being in the numbers is a good start, but it's not the ultimate destination. You need to come and to sign up and be a part. And if you're here today and you know you're saved and you want to come and join, now is the time to come by letter, come by Christian experience, come as a candidate for baptism. However you come, now is the time. Don't put it off anymore. Now is the time. Let us bow our hands in prayer. Father, we take the time to thank you. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us the way that you have. And we take the time now, Lord, to lift up our bereaved families. We pray, Lord, that you would be with Brother Don Brown, who's here with us on today, in the utilization of his mother on yesterday. Father, many of us know what it's like to lose a mother. Even though, Lord, we look forward to seeing him on the heavenly side, to hear that voice no more on this side, does something to us. So we pray now, Lord, that you be with him and help him and his whole family and take care of them in a mighty, mighty way. And Father, we pray, Lord, for Harry Floyd, that you be with him as he is under hospice care. Take care of him, Lord, up in High Point. And Lord, we thank you that when we talk to him, Lord, that he got a strong voice and still feeling good about you. Heavenly Father, we pray, Lord, for Chloe and thank you that she was able to get out of the hospital without the blood transfusion. We just fixed her. And Lord, we want you to know we thank you for that. We pray, Lord, that the antibiotics do what they need to do and you just take care of them. And then, Lord, you know she's praying for her grandmother, Lord, who has been turned over to hospice. But Lord, we thank you that she's got the right attitude about it. That she's going on to be with you. And that everything is well with her soul. And Father, we pray, Lord, for Tara Miller. Lord, as she's been interceding for her sister, Allison Adams, who's been diagnosed with MS. We pray, Lord, that you'll be with her and help her, even to the point that you can heal her body. We know that you're able because if you can cleanse a leper, Lord, we know that you can go ahead and cure this MS. So be with her, Lord, and help her. And then, Father, remember Brother Derek Field. We thank you, Lord, that it wasn't as bad as the doctors thought it was at first. We know that, that you fixed it, Lord. And we're asking that you continue to bless, continue to heal. We thank you, Lord, how one doctor was saying that it's not going to work, and the other doctor was full of faith and said it's not that bad, and it's going to work out. Thank you, Lord, for interceding with that other doctor. When one doctor wanted to cut his leg off, God, you said no, and said another doctor. We thank you for that, Lord. We appreciate it. Bless the Lord now as he's been upgraded from intensive care to post-intensive care. And bless the Lord as he prepares to go for rehab. Let him walk again, Lord. Let him walk through these doors here at CBC. And continue to give you the praise and to teach your Sunday school lessons. Father, we pray, Lord, for Jackie Youngblood. You continue to help her along the way. And all the things that she stands in need of, bless her real good, Lord, and help her all out. Father, we pray, Lord, for Vanessa Johnson, who's recovering, Lord, our chair of the Deaconess Ministry. Bless her real good, Lord. You know if she could be here, she would. Bless her husband, Lord, right there by our side. And help him, Lord, to be a help and a blessing to her. We thank you, Lord, for June, 
Davis and how you recovered her and she was here this morning giving us praise, giving you praise. We thank you for it, Lord. Continue to bless me, Lord, so we come and help him in a mighty way. Lord, continue to bless, Lord, uh, Sister uh, Brandy Watson. We thank you, Lord, for her being with us on the day and feeling better. God, we thank you for it. And then, Father, we pray, Lord, that you would bless our brothers and sisters up in Flint, Michigan. We pray, Lord, that the water is contaminated with lead. Lord, you know all about what needs to be done. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the government stepping in and running water. But Lord, touch us. Allow us to load up the truck and take it on up. Lord, help us to reach out to our brothers and sisters. And Lord, remember each and every one here. Bless us one by one. And name by name. We thank you, Lord. And we appreciate you. Remember each and every one on the sick and the shame in this. Bless with everything they stand in me. We thank you, Lord. We appreciate you. We've learned to wait on you. And you will help us with us. That's what God is our humble prayer. It's in Jesus' name that we can pray. And as God's children, we say, Amen. Co-chairs will come with their closing remarks, representative from the deaconess, and then we will come with a benediction and get you home before the second quarter. Amen. I know y'all ready to run. Amen.
children said, Amen.